Congratulations on coming to the Meow Bang, uh, the Meow Tour on World Art Day. Um, so tomorrow at the center we'll be celebrating that, so kids can come, make art in different stations, but you can also just explore the galleries and see the art that we have on display, fantastic contemporary exhibits. Um, our curator, Megan Kent, is also involved with the mural project, so we're all friends there. And if today doesn't satisfy your taste and your feeling for murals, you can come over when you go to the center. You can see one of the murals, which is on the map. I forget which number it is. I can see. Oh, here it is. It's number 27 by Jen Little. And that's a fantastic mural where we actually had community. We had invited everybody to come just paint whatever they wanted on the wall. And then the artist, Jen Little, actually incorporated that art in the final project. So you can see kind of the footprint of the community in that one. All right, that's enough of that. Um, but today we're going to walk around. We're going to take a look at about probably seven um, uh, murals. We'll see what we have time for. We might do a little more if we can squeeze them in. But as we walk, please do just be careful, be mindful of traffic. We're still in Florida, so, um, you know, the driving can be a little uh, adventurous, let's say. Um, and make sure that you're leaving space on the sidewalk in case there's anybody with, you know, strollers or bicycles or walkers trying to get through. Okay, um, and apologies, because I am filling in. I do have notes, so I will be referring to those notes. But I'll also do my best to answer as many questions as you have, or if I can't answer the question, we'll think through how we can get to the answer together. Because I am an educator, so there you go. Right. Um, so just a quick plug for the mural tours. This happens the third Saturday of every month. So if you love it, please tell everybody else so they can come next month. Um, it is uh, the mural project itself is put forth by the Hollywood Community Redevelopment Agency, or the CRA, and really the whole purpose of the mural project is to really diversify and add vibrancy to this historic downtown area, which is one of the uh, few historic shopping districts in the country. Um, so, and this mural tour is one of the largest walking tours, amazing dog. Um, uh, one of the, it is the largest walking tour in Broward. So, um, so we will only touch the surface of the fantastic murals we have to offer here in Hollywood. So that's what we want to make sure you get that map so that you can continue to explore. And new murals are always being added as well. Okay? So as we'll go through, I'll stop. I'll ask you for some questions, or I'll ask you questions, rather, at some points. But again, if at any point you have any questions, you're having trouble hearing me, just raise your hand, holler out, so that we can uh, um, keep enjoying our time together. Also in the work that I do teaching at the Art and Culture Center, we do a distance learning class that talks about murals and how you can kind of change your community with them. So this mural is by the artist Ah, B2 has the 
this part at the beginning, and they'll paint that. If you're a big fan of Games Magazine, you can actually do the same type of activity, and that where you kind of mix together an image from that. So they're probably on the other side, but you might not see an image of it. Um, so somebody was just pointing out the map. On one side, it doesn't have images to correspond with every mural. I think just for space. So there are some that are just numbers and some that you can actually see little images of. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. So this um, artist, you found it? Oh, good. This artist is Robbie, Ro uh, Rob Robbie, rather. And um, it's a com he's a commercial artist living here in Hollywood. This is really um, a good representation of his signature style which uses rich colors and realistic natural elements, um, but to really create a design that takes like design as a concept meeting fantasy, right? So you see that realistic figurative, um, that realistic figure in the structure, but playing with this idea, what is she biking on? She's on the edge of the world here. You know, this looks like stairs, also dangerous for bicyclists, you know, just, being conscious of safety. Um, so a whole bunch of different things happening here. This one was painted in 2018. Um, yeah, oh, and it was painted using exterior latex paint. So one thing I just want to take a second to talk about, when the murals are being painted, right, there's lots of different paint options for the artist to use based on how, you know, sorry, when we use those paints, also depends, um, determines how long the mural is going to last for, right? Any homeowners know that you have to repaint your house every certain number of years, so our murals need touch-ups as well. A lot of them are painted using exterior house paints, um, some with spray paint as well, and some, depending on um, kind of the vision of how long that mural is going to last, are then given a UV coat as well. Again, anybody who spent longer than you know, 20 minutes in the daytime sun of South Florida knows how close that sun is. Now you can feel it on your skin and how it changes everything around you. All of my books in my bookcase have been, um, I've had to rotate them out like three times over the last three years. And that's a shady room in my house because the spines keep getting bleached. So you can imagine what impact that might have on walls out here in the sunlight, right? So we'll actually get to see a couple different um, murals that have either been restored or about to be restored as we continue on the tour. Now one thing I just want to stop and ask about while we're here is what do you think, why would why would a city want to have murals? What would murals add? Yeah. Culture? <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Right? So you get to see some of the culture about South Florida, right? But also the different cultures represented in that area, right? One thing I think that's really fantastic about the, and I can say this because I'm only filling in for today, so I'm not actually paid by them normally. So this is not an endorsed plug. But the artists represented in the Downtown Hollywood Project are very diverse compared to what you see in a lot of other places where it tends to be male artists, um, oftentimes white who have been working in the field for a long time. Jill and the project itself has really worked to embrace the diversity we have here and to kind of honestly put that on display. So that's part of it, absolutely, culture. Why else murals? Tourism. Tourism, absolutely, right? You want to... Yeah, right there. I know, in fact, I actually had missed this one when I was looking at the map and going over with this with Jill. I've seen it, and then I was like, oh, it's just the wall of this building that I passed countless times. So my understanding, and I don't know the history of it, obviously, as well as Jill, but somebody asked how this project started. My understanding is that it was initiative by Metro, it was the mayor or the city council had brought it up to just do some kind of redevelopment, right? Because there's also studies that prove to connect with why do we mural, right? Um, that property values raise when you have more accessible art and murals in an area. Um, and there's also actually been case studies. There's one that was done in Vancouver, um, which was uh, looking at crosswalks. And so they took groups to crosswalk some with like that had interventions, like either plant landscaping or murals in that space and then spaces that didn't. And they gauged and they polled people on how they felt in those spaces and they found that the spaces that had that landscaping or those murals, people felt happier 
they felt um, more of a sense of like stewardship, meaning they wanted to maintain those spaces, um, and they felt like they wanted to come back to that space. So there's a lot of reasons why a city would decide to have a mural project. Um, so it started that way, that it was within the government, but they didn't have anybody to run it, and they didn't have any idea how to actually roll it all out. But Jill Weisberg had been connected to other mural projects in Broward, was very well connected within the arts world, and so she wrote a proposal, said, here's how I would do it, and if you pay me as a consultant, I can do it for you. And so she created herself a job. And years later, she now is working for the government, but this is her full-time job, is working on this. And she's fantastic on it. I mean, she made the our to be able to get a mural in our building was a huge, huge, um, goal of mine and something I did not expect to have an easy go of, right? We're a city-owned building. Um, we have two spaces, but one is historical. So I was just like, there's no way. But she walked us through that whole um, process, really advocated for the artists, connected us with local artists um, in a really meaningful way. So the city's very lucky for this project and for Jill's work on it. So this is actually one of the, this is the first mural of the mural project. So, great question, nice segue. September, it was finished. So, um, you can also see there's definitely some wear on this, right? So I think we were noticing on the side of the building, there's just the building itself. It's undergone lots of different renovations and restorations. So you can see some patchwork on the side. But you can also see years of just being out in the sun of South Florida is going to, to put some, some wear on the, uh, the mural. But just to talk a little bit about the mural itself, it's a great example of his style, which um, he, which other artists have referred to as pop surrealism, but he himself identifies as urban pop. Um, he is from, uh, I think I said that he's Dominican. Um, he has been drawing and painting since he was a child. And he also, to think more about this architecture and the connection, right, he intentionally used this red to connect to the hotel that does feel kind of more natural. And I don't know if some of you heard, I've walked past this mural so many times and actually haven't noticed it. Because I just like have seen it as part of the building. And it wasn't preparing for this tour. I was like, oh, that's a separate mural. Um, it just kind of marries itself so nicely with the architecture, it never occurred to me. This one was also done with exterior latex paint. Um, and he really, um, I think it's a fantastic mural to have as the first mural in this project because the artist himself really has, he has like this motto, it's something like almost never canvases, which I think is great because he's not completely limiting himself. He's like, well, sometimes I'll paint on a canvas, but almost never, right? Um, but he really embraces this idea that public art has no borders and that it really can kind of spill out into the community or the neighborhood that it's in. So I think it's a really wonderful artist to have to kind of kick off this whole project. Um, yeah. Any questions? And this is number 20 on your map. So if, if touch-ups are needed, will the artist come back and do it? So it just depends. So we'll talk about one that has been restored, one that's about to be restored. Um, as far as I know, I think it just depends on the business owner, what the artist is doing at that point, if they're interested. Most of the murals that I know about that have been restored have been those artists coming back, but sometimes they're just touching it up or sometimes they're repainting it. So we'll look at that too. Okay, wonderful. Um, I also just want to take a second, you know, we obviously thank you all for coming to this mural tour, especially with the weather that we've had this week and the flooding. I hope that everybody's been okay um, and that all of your homes are, are good, but what a nice time to kind of take a break from it and reconnect to our community and to art. So thank you again for making the time. Um, this artist um, is Ernesto Morante. Um, this one was done in 2015, it's a Miami native, um, and really wants to, within his work, he thinks a lot about um, using animals to kind of parallel the struggles that humans kind of face in their daily lives, um, and kind of connecting through empathy, like being able to kind of see yourself as those characters. Um, and then also really wants to kind of, by kind of taking away, you know, your human form, trying to get you to relate to, you know, potentially in this example, this turtle, kind of freeing you of those constraints 
that we would have within our daily lives and kind of thinking outside the box um, by giving us also this comfort and this color with these natural shapes and patterns. Does anybody notice the shapes that are in the waves? Yeah, like dolphins, also heard like leaves, right? So just this whole connection of this nature that this turtle is carrying on its back. Um, I haven't read this in terms of the anything about the inspiration for the mural, but I also think of um, within a lot of native cultures, there's the idea that earth was built on the back of turtles. Um, there's also different ideas that turtles all the way down. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. So I just think this like beautiful symbol of this turtle carrying all of this nature, beautiful flowers, all of this um, life kind of teeming. And fun fact, the sea turtle is also the logo of Hollywood. So there's also a nice connection within that. You might see it on some of the plaques. Oh, cute dog for me. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, and as far as I know, and I, this might have been, this might be old information, but at least when this was painted, this was his largest mural that he had ever done to date. So it was a big undertaking for him as well. Questions? Okay.
the original colors, it's actually the Miami Dolphins colors. So if you know what those colors are, that's such a bright orange and that like blue, green, teal, right? You can know how much this has faded and changed. Now I, I actually, I've seen this mural a lot. I've looked at it a lot. I could not have told you at all what was happening until I was preparing for this tour. Does anybody have a guess? What do you think is happening in the mural? So 
there are sometimes grants involved. So the business, if they can't afford to do it, they can't apply to have the extra funds that were covered because they would normally buy the paint and things like that covered. So it can be like a very, very cheap opportunity for a business to have some kind of public art that they might not have. Thank you. 